Hello everyone and welcome back in. Well, we are already up to episode number three of Trudy's Junkyard, our Warhammer inspired scene that we're creating here. And yes, in this episode, we're going to be painting our little figures, the stars of our show. We're also going to take care of some details on these buildings that we worked on in the last episode, just adding the little final touches that make them look all nice and pretty. Of course, we have a lot to do. Let's get to it. Well, when we left off in the last episode, we had been working on the two elements, the two buildings that were painted out more or less fully but we had not yet touched the crane. So this is where it stood as we finished up in the last episode. You'll see here in a second that I redid the bottom, so that lid, the cap, the red part. Well, that's gone now, and I made a little bit more of an industrial-looking frame. We'll talk about painting a little bit later on, the colors that I use, but this is one more time where I just could not you know, resist trying to use those rub-on letters, those dry transfers. So, And this is actually at the moment that I decided to name the scene Trudy or Trudy's Junkyard. No particular reason, just uh, the name that came to my head, and so here we go. In the last episode, I mentioned that I was rusty at doing dry transfers, and yeah, that's obviously the case here. But luckily, in this type of a scene, well, it doesn't have to be perfect, so this is okay. You also notice I painted some teeth on the front just to make it look menacing. And then, well, we don't want these to look totally fanciful, so we need to add some rigging, some cabling and such here and there. So I have some elastic thread here. It's a larger gauge elastic thread, really handy stuff. And I'll just start attaching that with a little bit of super glue to those little pivot points up on the top. And then I have these little rollers on the back side here where the, I guess the engine would be. Just kind of attach that in place there just to hold it. And then in a second, I'll just go ahead and wind these around a little bit just to give a little bit of spooling on those. Yeah, speaking of spooling, my cap is obviously in the way. Get out of there. There we go. Wind that around a couple of times. Again, I've got glue there, so it will all just stick in place once everything gets set for a second. And just clip off any excess with the scissors. Just that simple. Okay, let's just <laughs> change, change directions very quickly here. Let's go back to our base, because we need to kind of put things together a little bit here. So in the last episode, we did some construction, or basic construction, where we laid out the, the layout of the base. We carved out all these foam pieces for the rock wall in the back and a little bit of the elevations on the scene itself. Now it's time to start actually working on these. The first layer of material on this is AK's terrains. It's just natural earth. That's the white color. It's just got some texture to it. Then over that, I'm using sandy desert, so it's a little bit finer texture, I guess you would call it, but it also has color. Like I've said before, I'm finding that these colors are actually very, very helpful. We'll be doing some painting on this a little bit later on, but this is a good first start. really gives a nice jumping off point for doing our finishing work later on. Desert sand, again, a lighter shade and also a finer texture. Oh, watch out, Rick. We've got drips going. Oh, yeah, good. Good job, Rick. Just more textures and a little bit more colors, and actually, as I apply this color to the base, Actually, if you notice, I'm doing a little bit of almost dry brushing on it, so I still allow some of those shadows, the darker color of that sandy desert, to kind of shine through a little bit. I'd like to give a big shout out to my patrons. We have a great community over there. Over on Patreon, if you'd like a little bit more content, well, that's the place to go. Early viewings on these videos, progress photographs of these projects as they're ongoing. We have a Discord server for lots of chats. We're doing contests, giveaways. It's a great place, a great community. I invite you to come over and please join. Okay, well, it's time to get serious about the layout here. It's, we need to add that rock cliff to the scene here so I can start finishing it out. And, you know, let's just make sure this is nice and sturdy because it's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of vertical going on there that could be bumped over very easily. So I countersink in a few toothpicks just into the foam, secure with a little bit of white PVA glue, and then just kind of press the rock wall down into there again with some PVA glue on the bottom of the foam. Once that dries, now I can go ahead and start surfacing out the rest of the terrain. Just using the same colors as before, the same paste as before, AK Terrain Sandy Desert as the base layer. And it's not even dry yet, that base layer is not dry yet. And then just over the top, I'm almost like a wet on wet. Like, I kind of enjoy that method. Uh, that desert sand, which is the lighter, finer textured paste. And once everything dries, you get something that looks like that. Nice base. Let's see how everything starts to look here. So there's our Trudy's junk home, I guess. And here's our little container over to the side there. You can see these all nestle up against the wall. It looks kind of nice and cozy. Let's see what else. Oh, there's our crane. Yeah, let's put them, put him right there. <laughs> I love those teeth, don't you? 
and you can let me know in the comments. Maybe that's just silly. And I think we're going to put a little bit of a rock or this little pathway through there. So it'll be junk everywhere, but then a little bit of a pathway through the middle. Just a little bit of visual interest. And then speaking of visual interest, let's start adding a few components. Now this is one of those Warhammer pieces that I received from my friend with the shop. And these are the same colors that I painted out Trudy's crane. So we have the red brown, the rot brown, with just a touch of buff into it, just to lighten it and desaturate it a little bit. So this will give us a nice, you know, rusty, oxidized base. And now the challenge, because this piece and all the little groundwork that's molded into this, this needs to integrate with the entire scene. I'm using acrylic colors here that are close to what the terrain's paste are. And then just as a final kind of unifier, once I get everything painted out, just a light, light wash of the beach sand. So this is highly thin. So it's almost like a paint. So I'm not really adding texture at all. I'm just adding the color. And I find that this is a really nice way to start integrating some of these pre-built Warhammer type elements into the scene to make everything match up nicely. And then of course, we're gonna hit this with a little bit of oil paint as well, just to kind of bring out a little bit of life to it. Let's see how this looks again. So we'll put this someplace in this area right here in the corner I think it'll tuck in there a little bit I think yeah okay not too bad we'll have to build up some terrain around that and then oh there's the crane so he works or she works nearby I don't know what that is that she works nearby but that looks pretty good just a quick reminder if you like this channel and the content that's being produced over here at the propaganda channel hit that subscribe button well, now for the stars of our shows, these little fellows, uh, the Warhammer guys. Now, these are, I think they're Necromundo, if I'm saying that correctly. And this, again, is from my friend with the gaming shop, and he just lent me this or gave me this sprue. No instructions, so I'm just cutting off pieces here, and I don't really know what parts go with what parts. But with some trial and error, I finally get three figures put together, and... Well, that was a trial, so three figures is all we're getting out of this one here because that was a little bit <laughs> a little bit frustrating, and uh, that took a good, uh, good almost day to do it. Now, my OCD gets the best of me, so, of course, we need to drill out some of these gun barrels just like we would do with our, our 135th scale models. Now we're ready to paint. So the same process that I've been kind of developing over the last few episodes here, or the last few projects, Start off with a base coat, just brush it on of burnt umber. This will be the dark shadow color that's underneath everything. Find that's very helpful. And then my lighter colors. So put those in the palette. Now the clear up there that I'm tapping into on the top right corner, that's retarder. And I've started to try to use that a little bit more. It, well, one, it keeps my paints from drying out a little bit, you know, from drying out as quickly on the wet palette, even though they don't necessarily dry out. A little bit longer working times on the figure itself and that the final result is just maybe a little bit smoother. So the process here is very simple. The thing that I've been kind of working on the last few projects, basically just dry brushing. So this is the brightest bright now. So we've got the darkest dark, the burnt umber, and now the brightest bright, which is this ice yellow. And I'm just dry brushing and hitting these highlights. And I'll go around the figure a couple of times just to make sure that all those bright, pr pr bright parts are nice and covered. Wow, say that three times fast. Now we start doing a little fine tuning with the brush, just reinforcing those bright edges, the tops of the wrinkles and things like that, the zenithal highlights as they were, and just making sure those colors are nice and established. Again, we're only working with two colors at this point. Now we start working with the midtones and start blending everything together. I say we like we all do this. No, this is we like the royal we. <laughs> this is this is me trying to figure out how to paint figures. Switched up figures here just for a second here, because um, I'm working on all three figures at the same time during this process. And you can see I've added a few other extra colors onto the palette because on a couple of the figures, I'm already had jumped ahead a little bit and started working on the skin tones as I have right here. And just start brightening his face up a little bit. I don't know what these guys, do they have flesh colored skin? I don't really know, but um, I gave him flesh-colored skin, so he's got a dark reddish-brown as his base color, and now I'm just kind of lightening him, lightening it up a little bit on those top edges, as we've talked about before. Notice the brush strokes, usually just nice and tapping. 
not so much painting as stippling. The brightest highlight, just kind of tap him in on the forehead there, along the bridge of his nose. Just kind of bring that out a little bit. Oh, he's got big arms there, so let's make those muscles show up a little bit more. And as I continue to paint him out, paint some of the other, other details, the leather components. A couple of fingernails here, just kind of bring those out a little bit around his weapon. And then, yeah, he's not looking so bad. Yeah, not so bad at all. Let's switch up figures here for just a second. This is a different guy. Same process, the dark before, the dry brushing to get the highlights and then just start filling in the details and adding the mid-tones. And then he's got, I don't know what this is, some sort of a sword weapon, gun, laser, I don't, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not a Warcraft guy. But when we're finished here, or when I'm finished, here's where we are. These are our dudes. And these guys will be the, the pillagers going through the junkyard, I guess, taking whatever they want from poor old Trudy who, there's a little bit of a lineup of the colors used. I tried to limit my palette. One final shot of our guys. Yep, they're looking pretty menacing. Wouldn't want to cross them on a dark night. Well, I told you this is going to be a f <laughs> rough and tumble, uh, fast-moving episode. So we're going to go back to working on some of our buildings. So on Trudy's little house, the little blue and orange one, at the very beginning, and I know nobody's even noticed this, but there's little stanchions on the, on the roof line there to hold some banners. So I've been planning this all along. Yes, I do plan ahead every so often. This is Magic Sculpt, and I'm just rolling it out ever so thin, about as thin as I can. Of course, using baby powder which smells so very good as my powder to keep it from sticking to my, my tools. Then I just cut a small width, and this is going to be the width of my flags. And I want these to be more like pennants, so they'll be little triangular shapes, triangular shapes. So I just cut those out using my blade, and yep, things are starting to stick, but that's okay. They come off very easily. Thank goodness for baby powder, eh? And there they are, my three flags. I'll be using brass rod for the flag poles, so just so I don't have to worry about painting them, I just put a little burnishing fluid, darken them up nicely. Need to bore out this hole a little bit so it's the right... Oh, oh, whoops. <laughs> I'll glue that back on, but I need to bore out those holes just a little bit. This is tubing, but it's just a little bit too tight. So I use the knife, just kind of expand the hole a little bit and a little super glue and stick those in there. And then next, just a touch of water onto those posts and this will just help for the magic sculpt to grab onto and stick to these little brass rods. Just kind of carefully put that there, and there we go, got some flags. As long as I had scraps of magic sculpt sitting around, I thought, well, let's put a little bit of a, I don't know, a canopy or tarp or something like that on the front of this building. This will be like a, I guess, a sunshade. I had these little brackets sitting out there, so I thought, eh, you know what, Trudy's probably sitting on her front porch, just taking in the lovely views of her junkyard, just sitting back, sipping on, uh, you know, whatever she sips on. So this will be a little bit of a sunshade, I guess, on the front there. Just kind of tap that into place using a moist brush and then, oh, bump that. So let's get that back into place as well. And of course, we need to give these flags some color. So these have dried for about maybe, the, the putty has dried for maybe about, uh, I don't know, two hours here. So they're, they're still not fully cured, but they're stiff enough to paint. Just give them some nice bright colors because Trudy wants a lot of customers to come to her junkyard and do some buy, sell, and trade. Not necessarily the pillaging that's going to happen. And that brings us to the end of this episode. I think we're at a pretty good spot here. So our groundwork is obviously come a long way. So we've got a good start there. Still a lot more to do, and we'll get to that in the upcoming episodes. We've got our buildings pretty close to coming to completion. A little bit of that foreground starting to come together. So the next episodes, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll start tying it all together. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. It does help. If you'd like a little more content, if you'd like to be part of our chat and our community over on Patreon, well, the link for that is below. I invite you to join us over there. Until the next time, guys, well, <laughs> from the wasteland and Trudy's junkyard, I wish you all happy modeling. Take care, everyone. Talk to you soon.